morning, everyone. Welcome to morning meeting. And today we have Violet joining me, and she's going to help us learn about bio parts and how we prepare them today. Uh, so as always, please let me know where you're here and where you're from, and any questions that you have. We would love to answer them and say good morning to everyone. Uh, I'll give people a, few, a minute or two to roll in. In the meantime, we can focus on this pretty girl. Hi, Violet. Uh, so, Violet is a turkey vulture. Yes, what do you think? I have her right in the sun right now. She's like, hmm, this is, this is nice. This is a nice place. Uh, so, Violet has been with us since 2016. She got hit by a car, which is pretty rare for these guys. Uh, just because they are quite intelligent. They're about as smart as a four-year-old. Uh, so, they don't get hit very often, but she was pretty young when she did. Uh, so, she has a wing injury. Uh, will you turn around for me? Like, no, I want to face that way. <laughs> Good morning, Chuck from Rhode Island. Welcome. <laughs> um, so that is why she's with us. She had broken her wing when she got hit by a car, and so that's why she is non-releasable. Uh, easy. Hey, easy. <laughs> Sometimes she gets a little antsy, so we have to keep like, some attention on her. She knows she's the star of the show. All right, Miss Violet. What's going on? She's pretty about to walk by with her breakfast. Yeah. It's Abby. <laughs> cool. And so these guys, they are scavengers. Uh, so they're eating mostly dead things that are... Um, already dead. They don't have those strong feet like our hawks and our owls do. Um, but they are still considered raptors here in the U.S. There is a little bit of debate on that. Uh, a lot of people in Europe don't classify them as raptors. And good morning, Ryan! <laughs> um, but they don't have that strong, f those strong feet, but they do have a very sharp beak. Um, so they are very good at being the hazmat team in our nature. Uh, Chuck, how old do you estimate she is? We, um, oh, yeah, this is Violet, our turkey vulture. <laughs> yeah. uh, so she's about five years old now. She could actually live to be 30 to 40 years old in captivity. Hmm? Do you have an mission for us? Yeah. Oh, if you just, um, do you have a cell phone on you? I have a phone, but I have to go to Massachusetts. You just want to go up just bang on the door someone's with it's, in there. It's a pain in the butt when you go, when, when they have it in Massachusetts. Mm hmm And then you in, in, Mass, in New Hampshire. Yeah, I understand. Here, <laughs> that's a whole year you go around. It's yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, if you just bang on the door, someone will come out. <laughs> this is Violet, our turkey vulture ambassador. Uh, and then, good morning, Yvette. Good morning, Suzanne. She is quite beautiful. I believe so. She even has very beautiful eyelashes, if she'll let me show you. Hello. Please don't bite my fingers. Yeah. Uh, so these guys, they're scavengers. They're going to eat stuff that's already dead. Um, and that really sharp beak can actually pick things clean to the point where, like, you would possibly put them in a museum. Uh, good morning, Rebecca and Xander from Plymouth. Welcome, easy Riley. Hello. Uh, that beak is very, very sharp. Um, but she, on the nature, can make things very, very clean. Here at the Center for Wildlife, we have to kind of do some of our bio prep on our own. She, she is very attentive, Suzanne. Um, she knows. Everyone that she's looking around at everyone that's walking around between our clinic staff and we just had an admission that was the woman I was just talking to. Um, and she knows the people that feed her. Um, so she absolutely loves people, uh, which is really fun. Right, Violet? Uh, so here at the Center for Wildlife, we use bio parts, or wings and feet and skulls and stuff like that, to help us teach the public when we can go on programs and stuff like that. Um, if you've ever been to one of our programs, you've probably seen our tote that has skulls and feet in it that we show and will use during the programs, and then you can um, usually touch them at the end. 
Um, so the center, <laughs> no. Chucky, you've heard that buzzers are very dirty birds, puking and pooping everywhere. The, the puking and pooping is true, um, but they are much more clean than their reputation implies. Um, so they puke as a defense mechanism because um, they don't have those strong f- f- talons that uh, another type of raptor might have. Um, so she does. She will puke as a defense mechanism to f- so she can fly off. Um, and her bat- her stomach is stronger than battery acid. They are literally nature's hazmat crew. Uh, so they can digest and neutralize rabies, anthrax, botulism, uh, lots of different things that would make us really really sick. Um, and so that stomach acid is less than the pH of two. Uh, so when it comes up, it smells absolutely rancid, um, but they can actually eat it again. Um, so they're going to fly off, make themselves lighter, and then the predator, whatever scared them, is going to smell that and s- notice that it does not smell good. Um, so the predator usually will actually leave it as the food as well, um, and then they'll come back to it. Um, but they do puke as a like when they're nervous and scared. Um, but in the pooping, though, they, so I remember that stomach acid's very acidic, and so they're, uh, when they go to the bathroom, it still is very acidic. Um, but it, anything that was in there is neutralized. Um, so they're, they will go to the bathroom, actually, on their legs, um, and on the place that they're sitting on a carcass, and it neutralizes whatever stuff was there. So it's pretty much like them using hand sanitizer on their legs, which is incredible. <laughs> um, but she, you can see she has her wings out right now. She's trying to get some of those sun rays to bake some of the bacteria and stuff off like that. Um, and then you can see as she has her wings out, you can see all that white on the other side of her. Uh, so that's one way you can tell a turkey vulture up in the sky is because they're going to have their b- big black body and the whitish silver on the underside of them. Um, but they do puke and poop, but they are actually pretty clean. <laughs> um, her nose... She'll let me show you. So all those little tiny feathers, tiny little black feathers on her head, she can pull them back. It's called cue balling. Um, and then you can see that her nares is hollow. Um, so there's a hole through them. Please don't bite my fingers. <laughs> uh, so she can pull those feathers back so that she doesn't get any stuff on them. And then she's actually going to use her toes to pick out anything in her nose that might have gotten there. Uh, so even though they do get a pretty bad rap of being dirty. They're actually super, super clean birds. Um, Suzanne, they're not as smart as crows, but they are almost as smart as crows. So Dante, our American crow, is about as smart as a six-year-old, and um, that's his, her roommate. They live together. Um, she's about as smart as a four-year-old. Um, so they're still both very sassy and silly together. Um, sometimes we call them double trouble just because they get into so much goofy shenanigans together. Um, but they're kind of, they really are like human siblings. They get jealous of each other if you're playing with one, the other wants to play. Um, and sometimes Dante's crows will cash them and hide their food just like a squirrel's going to hide their acorns. Uh, so he'll fly over because he's fully flighted. Sometimes he'll steal some of her food, go hide it. She can smell parts per billion. They have one of the best senses of smell in the avian world, or in the animal world in general as well. Um, so she can smell the carcass from several miles away. Um, so she can obviously smell it inside their enclosure. And so she'll go over, steal it back, he gets mad, bites her tail feather, she chases him. It's very much like a human sibling, which is like just like a human four and six year old will get along. <laughs> um, so she can handle COVID nineteen. Yes, she, yes, she can, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, back to our bio parts. If Violet's gonna behave for a little bit. Um, so when we get bio parts that we need for um, program totes and stuff like that, especially right now as we're building some of our stuff up for our new nature center. Um, so we have things that we can put out during that. Um, so right now what we're doing is trying to add to our biopart collection, which is a really fun job for me because it's part of my job. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is if it's a uh, wing or feet, this is kind of how we're going to dry them out. Um, these are both wood, woodcock wings and woodcock feet. Um, so they're just pinned so that they dry out. There's not a whole lot of muscle and tissue in there. Uh, so they do dry relatively quickly. Um, 
And then if it's a skull, um, I'll clean it up and then I'll put it in a little bucket kind of like this. And we have an area at the Center for Wildlife where I can put all of our skulls during the uh, all seasons. So during the winter time, I'll put them in the blue bucket just like this. And then put some mealworms and bugs in there. Stay violet. But, but, but where's my breakfast? <laughs> she sees everyone walking by. She says, do you have food? Do you have food? Do you have food? <laughs> right, Violet? <laughs> um, so I can put them in one of these buckets and then put some mealworms in them. Or I can put, during the summertime, I can actually just put them in like a have a heart cage. And the, naturally the bugs will come to them. Um, little carrion beetles that are really good at eating all that stuff. Um, so after they're sufficiently cleaned, I'll clean out the bucket, and then I'll put... Hi. I'll use some hydrogen peroxide just like this, and I'll put them the skull in a bucket. This is a porcupine skull um, that is actually already clean and ready to go. It just has to be um, glued down into a little um, a box so that we can use it. Um, but that's what this is. It's all ready to go. And so I'll scrub it down with a toothbrush with hydrogen peroxide, um, and I'll let that sit. Sometimes, depending on how well the bugs did, I'll let it sit for a day or two, and sometimes I'll re-change uh, the hydrogen peroxide clean again. Um, and then once I'm sufficiently happy with how the skull looks, I'll let it bleach in, uh, or sit in bleach for a couple hours, um, no more than a day, just because the bleach actually makes the bones brittle, um, but the hydrogen peroxide does not. So I mostly use the peroxide with it, and then I'll give it one quick rinse of the bleach to kind of give it the best look. Uh, so this porcupine skull is all ready to go, it just has to be glued down. Uh, so I actually have a whole box of stuff over here that I can show you guys. Um, so if, once the wings and the feet are dried, um, so they go through a leathering process where I just use a hot glue gun and then whatever leather I can find, just like these. Um, and then I'll write by it. Um, so this is just some of our stuff that's already prepped and ready to go. Um, this is some of the stuff that we don't use as often. They'll hopefully use more in the nature center. Um, this is a wild turkey foot that's already prepped and labeled. Um, so, I have a, a couple boxes over there you can see that it's a process, so there's stuff that's in the middle of being cleaned, um, and then I have boxes like this one where they're ready to go, they just have to be, they're all dried and whatnot, they just have to be labeled and leathered. Um, so that's what this box currently is, um, so that uh starling wing, and then a hoary woodpecker wings, a sour owl wing, right? Um, so that's a prep basket, right Violet? <laughs> as, as well as this bucket. So this is a bucket of feet that just have to be labeled and weathered. Um, so I got some barred owl feet, um, a mallard foot, uh, a pigeon foot, <laughs> uh, uh, what was this, a uh, dove key, you can see the tiny little webbings. And then once they're labeled, uh, weathered and labeled, they're going to go into a box that's labeled like just like this, extra wings, extra feet, depending on the size. Um, so here is a dove key wing that's all ready to go. Oh, there's the label. As well as a sawet and then another a kestrel wing. Um, so we have, we have to be pretty careful here at the center just because our stuff is right now in our um, education building, um, which isn't the most tight proof. Uh, so we do have to be pretty cautious about bugs and checking things. Violet, hey. What are you doing? Dick, but my breakfast just walked by. I'm so excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Rebecca and Xander, that you saw a crow. Yeah, they're really common. You might be able to hear Bertram, our common raven. 
like that, <laughs> talking behind me um, over in the education hall. He's waiting for his breakfast. Um, but both of them are pretty common around here. Oh, you're welcome, Suzanne, and good morning, Theo. <laughs> So everything, once everything is dried, we'll weather them, and if they're skulls, they'll go into cases just like these. Um, see, these are just some other ones that we're just right, getting ready to put in to cases, like this one. This one's the cr American Crow, and then a squirrel, um, a gull, a cicada, which is pretty cool. What else we got in here? And then we got a northern gannet. And a monarch butterfly, which is taped, which is pretty cool. We don't have a whole lot of bugs in our uh, collection right now. We're at, starting to add to them, which is pretty exciting. Let's see, a uh, rough grouse. <laughs> And then we got a turn. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. Um, and then, ooh, this is one of my favorites. It's a turkey vulture skull. Right, Violet? You can see that hole through the middle. And then that's compared to a California condor. It's quite large. That condor actually has a wingspan of about 11 to 12 feet. Um, Violet, she is very large in herself. She has a wingspan about six feet. What else we got over here? And then we have a northern gannet skull. A little musk turtle skull. So tiny. This one, a uh, thick build mer. <laughs> and then we got an American woodcock. They're pretty cool just because they're the way that their tongue sits in their mouth. Right, bye. A little dunlin. And then a little tiny hummingbird. You can see the wing, the skull, and the foot. Very, very, very tiny. <laughs> Hi, Violet. Oh, so pretty. Uh, Chuck Violet will be having, I believe, mice today. Um, she sometimes does get special treats, like, uh, like a big fish head. Uh, if we get them donated, or rabbits, or guinea pigs. Um, I believe today she's getting mice. Uh, Chuck, do we ever get bald eagles as patients? Um, not very often. We actually got a juvenile bald eagle a couple months ago um, that we transferred up to Avian Haven just because they're a bit more better suited to treat them than we are. Um, and they have more space for them. Um, so if you've ever been to the center, you might notice the big, long building that's next to our education facilities. Um, so that is our flight enclosure, as well as the enclosure we could put an eagle in that's large enough. Um, but at the time, Avian Haven up in Freedom was had a couple other e bald eagles in their care. Um, so we sent him up to them so that they could take care of him with them. Right? They're pretty magnificent, but we just don't get them very often. Right, Violet. What do you think? <laughs> You're such a goofy girl. Xander, how often do we feed Violet? Um, so she does get fed every day, um, but we do weigh our ambassadors and make sure that they're healthy. We don't want them to get... Um, fat or anything like that because they could really hurt themselves um, if they were. Good girl. I know. There's a truck coming. You're okay. There's a FedEx truck coming down the driveway and she can hear him. It's 
quite loud. So between the truck and Bertram's chatting right now. <laughs> You're okay, Violet. Uh, so sometimes in the summer, if they are on the bigger side, we may fast them once a week. So in the wild, they wouldn't get food every single day. Um, but we just haven't um, right now, just because everyone's doing okay. No one's getting um, too chunky. Um, but we do monitor their weights pretty closely, though. Just cause we want them to be nice and healthy and be with us for a very long time. Oh, thank you, Chuck. That's so sweet of you. Baby and Haven is awesome. Look, you guys. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Uh, good morning, Naomi. <laughs> Sandra, how many ruby-throated hummingbirds... Oh, you have many ruby-throated hummingbirds that visit in your yard. That's awesome! Uh, so we actually have one that's been hanging out behind me in our um, bushes right next to our main entrance, the door. Um, that's awesome. They're really, really cool to see. Um... If they're not here year round. They do migrate because they are so they are so small. Um, but they're really cool to, if you get the chance to see them. Just because they are so small. <laughs> oh, she is gorgeous, Naomi. You're right, right, Violet. Everyone thinks you're so pretty. You're so pretty. <laughs> Easy. Oh, nice stretch. So sometimes we actually do like a yoga program, um, and we'll use Violet just because she does do a bunch of fun yoga moves that are fun to try to do too. Oh yes, scratch, scratch, scratch. You enjoying the sun? Oh, you're so pretty, Violet. <laughs> right? Oh, showing off. Are you showing off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can tell these guys from our black vultures, um, just be from the way that their wings are up in the sky. So there's going to be a big black bird. Um, but the turkey vultures will have the silver going all the way down, where the black vultures only actually have them at the fingertips. Um, from the name turkey vulture, you can see the nice red head, the turkey-like feet, and the black vultures have a blackhead. Uh, so they do definitely differ in appearance. They are cousins. They're both still scavengers. But these guys actually have a much better smell than the black vultures do. Um, the black vultures tend to be a little bit more aggressive sometimes. So they'll actually bully these guys off of a carcass and follow them to f find their food for them. Yeah, it is the soaring bee. You're right, Chuck. Um, the, you can see their wings go back in a V and then the... Um, Silver underside to these guys. You're okay, good girl. She's like, oh, that sun, M nice and clean. Good morning, Sheila. <laughs> um, Rebecca, she was actually hit by a car, unfortunately. So Violet's been with us since 2016 as an ambassador. Um, so it's pretty rare for these guys to get hit, just because they are so smart. Oh, good girl. Uh, so she was just, it's called preening. She was fixing her feathers, which means she's comfortable, which is always nice to see. What do you see up there? I don't know what you're looking at, but that's okay. It's easy. Uh, so she was hit by a car and broke her wing, so she can't fly. She can't doesn't get around great. Um, she does live in an enclosure with Dante, our American crow, and there's a bunch of ramps for her to climb around on. Um, but as we actually found out last summer, Violet actually fostered a baby for us, which is awesome. She did a wonderful job being a foster mom. Um, but we, when we went to go put her back into her closure, and Dante was so excited. He missed her so much. And we found out that, I guess, baby probably taught Violet a couple little tricks. And that she was much more mobile than we had th originally thought. <laughs> um, because the baby got bigger. Uh, the baby is moving around fully flighted. Violet is not flighted. Um, so she learned a couple tricks, which is pretty fun. Uh, good morning, Sheila. Good morning, Angela. Does it have a white beak? Um, so the as adults, they do have the white beak, um, but that white beak is actually black when they're youngsters. Don't bite me, please. Yeah. Um, but when they do get older, they do have that 
It's a very sharp, long, white beak for them. Oh, that's very odd, Chuck. I'm sorry about that. Um, there was a donation button. I don't know what happened with that. Um, as always, thank you guys for your donations. We really appreciate it right now, especially. Um, we don't receive any state or federal funding, um, so we are incredibly grateful for our community that we are in. Right? It looks like I miss meeting all my friends on programs. Um, these guys... <laughs> Yeah, nice stretch. Okay, easy. What are you so antsy about? Um, because we haven't been able to have our normal programming, um, we are really grateful for the donations that you guys have been giving to us through these Facebook Lives. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Because um, we are getting through the pandemic just like everyone else right now. <laughs> Right, Violet? Do you want to go for a walk? Like, are you getting antsy? I guess I'm getting antsy. <laughs> uh, so, if you guys have any last questions, um, please drop them in the comments. I'll definitely answer them for you. Um, in a few minutes, we're going to go put her back. She's starting to get a little antsy this morning. <laughs> I don't want her to hurt herself and try to jump off the perch, so... Oh, that's a wild crow. Easy. Hey. Behave, Missy. Yeah. You're so pretty. Oh, good girl. Yeah, so that little shake she just did was called a rouse. Um, so that I mean, she's comfortable with shaking out her feathers. Hi, lovey. <laughs> Angela, do we know how long her wings are? We do. Um, so she has about a six-foot wingspan. Um, there was a <laughs> funny meme going around when the pandemic first really started, like, stand the turkey vulture away from other people. Right? But she does have a massive wingspan, if I can get her to put her wings back out for you. Hey. Sorry, I'll stand out of your sun. I just want you to put your wings out. It's like, no, because you want me to. Why would I, why would I do that? <laughs> right, Violet? You're so pretty, girl. Um, Kimberly, she was actually hit by a car. Oh, little friend. Hit by a car, which is pretty rare for these guys. Um, because they are so intelligent. She's about as smart as a four-year-old human. Um, so... They do rarely get hit, but she was also a youngster when she did, uh, which is why, partially why she does make a wonderful ambassador, because she was still pretty young. Oh, yeah. Good girl, Violet. <laughs> um, so she br had a wing injury, which made her non-releasable, so she can't fly um, in her enclosure. She has ramps and stuff like that to get around, um, but she cannot fly, unfortunately. But we love you, and you're a w easy. Hey. Um, Chuck, why did we house her with the crow? Um, so it, they are both highly intelligent. They're both youngsters. Um, it wasn't, uh, it was a trial period. We had to make sure that they weren't going to hurt each other. They're both scavengers. She only eats dead things. Um, and the crows are opportunistic scavengers, so they're going to eat a lot of dead things as well. Um, and Dante definitely would not be trying to eat Violet. Um, so we did try it out. They're kind of like a little odd couple. <laughs> um, they keep each other entertained, and they both love when people come to say hi to them. Um, and they're both highly social species. Um, so we did try them out, and they were getting along great. Easy. Okay, we're going to go back. Don't nippy. Right? We're going. Uh, but that's why we did house them together. Uh, just because they do get along fine. Just like human siblings. It's just fun to watch them. Oh, you're so much, Angela. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. And we'll see you tomorrow. Say bye, Violet. <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs>